So, you like playing board games? Exacting. Welcome to the YouTube channel Exacting Games. Today we explain the rules of the game Urbino. The cardboard box contains multilingual game instructions, two little cotton bags, one of them contains the material to your left and the other one contains the material on the right side. The game board consists of 9 times 9 squares. Then there are two red playing pieces. And at last there is a white and a dark set of buildings. A set consists of 1, 2, 3 towers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 palaces, and 1, 2, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 18 houses. Urbino means little town, and in Italy there is a town which bears that name. This game is inspired by that town. You can recognize that by the flat roofs of the buildings. And the two red playing pieces refer to a historical figure of Urbino. To start the game, one player decides for the light pieces and one player for the dark pieces. Then black takes one architect piece and puts it on any space on the board. Then it's player white's turn and he or she as well puts an architect on any free space. Then the black player can choose if player white or player black has the next move. That means to start placing buildings onto the board. Therefore the architects have to measure the land. Imagine both architects look horizontally, vertically and diagonally in every direction. On every space where lines cross, a player is allowed to place a building. So you could place a building here, or here, also here, or here. If the architects would be placed like that, the lines would cross on that square. If the architects would be placed like that, the lines would cross on that three squares, but not on that one. Because one architect can't measure through another and they can't measure through any buildings. But diagonally through two buildings, they can do their work. And now we start with placing buildings onto the board. The higher the building, the more value it has. You have the free choice of which one you use. Let's say player black begins and places a house on this square. Player white can leave the architects like that and use for example this square to build a house or player white can decide to move one of the architects to a new free space and to place a building on another square where the lines of the architects cross. Then it's black player's turn and a house is placed on that square. With the next move of white something changes in the game. Because with this move a district is made. A district consists always of a white and a black block. If player white would have placed a house on this square, this formation would not be considered to be a district because the buildings have to be connected horizontally or vertically. The two houses are just standing free. If you build or expand a district, you are not allowed to separate buildings of the same color. In this example, a black house is separated from another black house in the same district. The next placement of a black house is also not allowed. The same rule forbids player white to place a house right here. But not on this square. Why? Because the diagonal position to the black house is not considered to be a connection. A white house on this position is also allowed. Because all white buildings are connected and no black buildings are separated. Another rule says that you can't put a palace next to a palace nor a tower next to a tower, independently of the color. So this placement is not allowed. That as well. And that one also. During the game you are not allowed to skip a move, but this example shows that you sometimes have to pass. 
it is black's turn and the player places a house on this square. A district is formed. Now white moves an architect on this space and places a house on this square. Now it's the black player's turn, but he or she can't place a building and has to pass. In fact so often till he can place a building again. Would have player white placed a building on this square before, the game would be over, because player white and player black can't place any buildings. Now we explain the scoring of the game. This example helps us explaining the scoring. For a better overview, you can put away the two architects. Then you take away single buildings and connected buildings with just one color because you can only score within districts. And remember, buildings which are just standing diagonally to each other are not connected. In this example, there are four districts. A house is worth one point. So player white has one, two, three, four, five, six points in this district. And player black just one point. So player white has more points in this district and that's why player black loses his or her points. Till now player white leads with 6 points. In the next district there are palaces which are worth 2 points. Both players have 5 points and the same buildings. In that case no one gets points. And you can take the buildings from the board. The next district contains towers which are worth 3 points. Both players again earned the same amount of points, but this time with different buildings. In that case you start to compare the amount of towers. Both players have one tower, then the amount of palaces. Player white has one palace more than player black. So player white wins the district and can earn points. Player white leads with 12 points. In the third district player black has earned 4 points and player 1 just 1 point. So player white loses the district. Player white wins the game with 12 to 4. If both players would have collected the same amount of points in the end, the player with the more valuable buildings wins the game. A draw is also possible. At last we explain the expert scoring. For that we use this example. First you remove the architect from the board. If three houses are standing next to each other in a straight line horizontally or vertically, they build a town wall and your score doubles. That are six points. The white player just has one point and loses the district. If like in the next example, a palace, a house and a palace are standing next to each other in a straight line horizontally or vertically, they form a Dussel palace and you get the double amount of points that are 10 points. White gets only one point and loses the district. In the next district, the combination tower, palace, tower on a straight line builds a cathedral and you get the double amount of points that are 16 points for the cathedral and 3 points for a palace and a house. Player white doesn't earn points. In the last district it looks like player white is going to earn many points because there is a cathedral, a wall and a Dussel palace. But sorry, you are only allowed to score with one special building in a block. Player white of course decides for the cathedral. The other buildings are scored like usual. That way player white collects 24 points and player black 36. Black wins. If both players have the same amount of points in a district or all together, the special buildings which are more value decide which player wins. That were the rules for Urbino, an exacting game. Exacting.